I just want to clarify a few things I said in the last video because I got some serious negative feedback. I'm guessing I should have put the full video out at once. This half was actually the section I thought would get criticism. Also, I apologize for not posting my sources, but I've posted each at least twice in other videos, but I guess that wasn't enough. Also, it seems that people didn't listen to my last video when I said that testosterone is aggressive permissive. I knew a lot of really smart, nice jocks in high school and a lot of geeks that were assholes. However, the stereotype is there for a reason. Of course, the nice jocks could never relate to me as they had no problems with the ladies and always gave blanket advice of, you just need more confidence. It made them feel better, but it really didn't help me at all. What I needed was practice so I could get confidence. But of course, I and many fellow nerds had these high ideals about the women we wanted and the kind of relationship we wanted to avoid breakup and heartache that we never got the experience to get the confidence. It was not until I started dating for the fun of dating and getting experience with women that I was able to gain the confidence I needed. According to the neuroeconomist Paul Zak, oxytocin is the chemical in our brains that generates altruism, trust, and bonding. When used with mirror neurons, they create empathy. Oxytocin is a weak and fragile chemical that can be easily destroyed. It's very low at baseline in us and requires stimulation to be produced, dropping off rapidly. Oxytocin is produced in women to create pair bonding and generate sexual arousal, while men use AVP that requires just looking at a woman and being aroused to feel in love. Women require the cuddles. One of the quickest ways to a man's heart, however, is his ego. In a relationship that is going somewhere, the woman will be aroused by the man's confidence and stroke his ego with compliments and other nonverbal ways. This causes his testosterone to rise, increasing his sexual appetite. Assuming he can handle his testosterone and not do something stupid, this will cause a gradual cycle of dopamine for both parties. Both of them will have this good feeling tied to all the memories of this person, and even when the sex appeal and testosterone boosting is gone, they will still have the feelings of emotion deep in their limbic systems when thinking of that person. This is quite probably what is defined as pair bonding. The limbic brain is our animal brain that is more about emotion and less about logic. In evolutionary terms, it's very advantageous to remember negative or positive emotions. There is a reason why a person who has damaged memory, who can't remember his wife's name, can still remember he loves her. Limbic memory is very long lasting and the longer you have the emotion tied to that person, the longer it will take to lose that emotional tie. Over time in a relationship, the testosterone will inevitably reach its peak and begin to decline for various reasons. Sometimes the man will become desensitized to praise. Sometimes a job or financial problems can occur diminishing his testosterone level, which has been shown to be one of the biggest destroyers of relationships. Sometimes when a couple moves in together, their living style clashes and the female partner will dislike these habits and give negative feedback. The brain processes negative memories more strongly than positive ones, which will have a bigger short-term effect on testosterone than praise does, even if it stays at the same level. This is, of course, not to say that the male won't give the female partner negative feedback, but she is not nearly as reliant on ego. Whatever the cause, his testosterone will fall, he will be less attractive, and he will be in for a bit of a shock as he's no longer being worshipped as a god with unconditional praise. It's why so many men feel like their women are trying to change them not long after a long-term relationship is established. Even if the woman had no intention of changing him, this effect will occur. Perhaps she was planning on changing him. Really bad strategy, ladies. Your love life will probably suck if you go into a relationship with this plan. Relationships require intrusion on one's own life. It's very rare that you can have a relationship that doesn't require you to change at least a little bit and move out of your comfort zone, usually in ways you never even thought about. Unfortunately, this shock of going from in love to a long-term relationship can have an effect on the testosterone levels. At my job, I would hear female co-workers talk about their husband's bad habits, laziness, and many times domestic incompetence. They just laugh and say, well, that's just how men are, thinking it's perfectly normal for how men are. 
I felt irritated by this and judged them for thinking, well, if they're going to baby their men, that's exactly what they get. Studies show that on average, men think they do twice as much work around the house than they actually do. After studying testosterone, I now have to give these women a little bit of slack. They didn't marry these men to raise and change like a child. They knew what they were getting themselves into and were okay with it. Doesn't make it right or fair, but if they were going to give the sufficient level of negative feedback needed to change these guys from being lazy, their sex lives would probably become non-existent. A recent study showed that having children and being around children reduces your testosterone levels. This has the evolutionary advantage that a man is less likely to cheat or leave his family if he's fathered a child. Plus, without the testosterone levels as high, the oxytocin can kick in and will have more bonding with his child and his wife. In many tribal societies, many women end up breastfeeding for up to four years, which releases progesterone, which lowers chances of getting pregnant again. This is great in an evolutionary sense. If there's a lot of babies, there will be a limited number of resources. Young men age slower and the tribe lives longer, meaning more wisdom. Testosterone also starts to drop around 40 years old because taking care of the family and the tribe is much more important than reproduction and testosterone reduces lifespan so the body does what it can to extend life after reproduction. Oxytocin reduces stress, reducing aggression, reducing testosterone, which is why young teen males instinctively and culturally know kissing their mother is looked down on and embarrassing and they are extra annoyed by their young siblings hanging around them who idolize them. They are having their testosterone levels dropped, slowing their development. Nerds and other antisocial thinkers avoid the hierarchical bullshit of socializing as much as possible, which makes aggression a non-essential tool, which also slows their development. Oxytocin reduces testosterone by reducing stress and aggression, but it is a weak chemical and can be completely destroyed by high levels of testosterone if you're not getting enough of it in repeated doses. Once again, all of this lower testosterone raises your health and lifespan, but it makes your teen and early 20s suck in areas like the US where manliness and testosterone are over idealized. Finally, weight has an impact on hormones in both men and women. Fat cells throw off hormone balance as they produce both testosterone and estrogen. The body may overcompensate and up levels of the other as well. Obesity can lead to high levels of estrogen in men and low testosterone can increase chances of obesity in men. High estrogen in men given large breasts and other more feminine features. While obesity was considered a sign of wealth back in the day, which countered the negative attraction of high levels of estrogen, it no longer has that connotation and is instead viewed as a sign of ill health. Social views, especially when programmed at an early age, can completely change what features you find attractive. Women who are overweight or smoking or drinking have a much higher level of testosterone highest in smokers, which can lead to herozytism or excess body hair. Low estrogen after menopause can also lead to obesity. It also can put women in the male level of aggression to the point that the UK in the last 10 years has seen a 2% decline in male crimes, but a 25% increase in female crimes due to higher levels of binge drinking, smoking, and American style obesity. Testosterone is a hormone that affects every aspect of your life, from relationships to bullying to weight to physical attributes to lifespan to sex. It is one of the building blocks of love and relationships that is not discussed as much because it works in the background and isn't as direct as oxytocin and AVP.